Last year, um, people described it as a professional race with a community feel, and we wanted to improve on that this year. And one of the areas that we wanted to target were elite runners and to add an elite element to the field. And uh, we were lucky enough to uh, get in touch with Runfast, and Tom was actually very helpful in suggesting how we could attract more elite runners and uh, gave us some great advice. Um, and uh, during the course of that, we uh, asked him if perhaps he'd like to come down and talk to us. And um, he's very kindly donated his time tonight to come and do that. Um, giving away his time very freely and generously. I think he's running at the weekend too. So uh, we're very, very grateful for Tom's coming down. So thank you very much. Um, a little bit of background about Tom, just to make it relevant to people here. Who has run a lap of Richmond Park? That's a good hands. Okay, so I bumped into Tom a few weeks ago, and uh, he'd just done two laps, and uh, he looks very comfortable, and he finished two laps in 1.19. Um, and I think uh, he's recently gone on better and done three laps in just 2.01. So that gives you an idea of just how fast he actually is. So uh, thanks very much, Tom, and uh, I'll let you get started. Um, well, first of all, can everyone hear me without the microphone? No? no? You can't hear me? Okay, good. Yeah, but close the door a bit. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you um, for inviting me um, here tonight. It's uh, very kind of you, and um, it's good to be able to support the Ealing Half Marathon. Um, as Martin said, it's the first time we've sent elite athletes to the race. Um, so I'm going to talk to you tonight a little bit about my sort of history in running, what I do as a manager, um, what I've learned from the Kenyan runners, um, and I'm going to also introduce the, um, the Kenyans. So just um, a bit about what I'm going to talk about tonight. I think. I mentioned all them, the Kenyan secrets, we'll go through those. Maybe you can take something from them, maybe some new things you haven't heard of before, we'll, we'll see. Um, and we're going to tell you a little bit more of the background of Runfast. So um, we shall start with that. Um, Runfast started um, as a sports management company back in 2009 um, by Peter McHugh, who's uh, sat here beside me. Um, started as a bit of a sort of an accident really. Peter was um, at a marathon in Italy, uh, the Carpi Marathon, um, looking after a group of um, Victoria Park runners, uh, when the race director asked him if he would look after a few of the elite Kenyans whose manager wasn't there to look after them. And um, since then, um, nearly four years later, three and a half years later, I think Runfast have had about 250 podium finishes around the world. We've competed in many, many countries um, and we've got a, a, a large team of around 60 elite athletes this year. Um, mainly Kenyans, which is where we started, but this year we've branched out into Ethiopia, uh, Uganda um, and Rwanda. And we're also representing a few of the top British people as well. Um, we're, everyone that works at Runfast, we're all passionate about running. We all, uh, it's, it's what we do day to day, and, um, and for most of us, it's a, it's a pleasure to be able to work in, in running as well. Um, after the, the sports management company, um, Peter decided to start a sports retail side of the um, Run Fast. So we have a shop currently um, in central London um, on Leadenhall Street, which is where the Run Fast sports management office is as well. Uh, we're in the process of opening a much bigger shop, um, which is very close by, and um, hopefully going to create a whole running community around Runfast. Um, we're branching out into race management, um, sports tours and holidays, which I will come back to later, um, and that's our web address. So I thought I'd start with uh, introducing the, the elite athletes who are racing in Ealing on, uh, on Sunday. First, we have Matthew, would you just like to stand up? <laughs> the 
to get my information on Matthew and tell you a bit about him. Um, so as you can see, he has a half marathon best of 62.18, which is not bad. <laughs> uh, he ran this last year at altitude in Nairobi, which makes it even more impressive. The standard chart of Nairobi half marathon where he ran it is probably one of the most competitive half marathons in the world. Um, many of the, the, the best Kenyan athletes that have competed in this race have never, not even won it. You know, people like Jeffrey Mutai have competed in it and they haven't won it. So to win this race is really something special. So you have a really top athlete competing on, on Sunday. Um, this is his second trip to, to the UK. Um, he came earlier in the year, um, competing in Bath Half Marathon. He had a problem though, it was very cold. <laughs> but even so, but even so, it was opinion, so. Um, in fact, it, it, I don't know if you remember back to that time of the year, but it was freezing. And, and temperatures that these guys have never even been anywhere near in their life. So his times were, were a little bit slower than we were hoping for, but still amazing times. Um, he, he, so he ran 63 there. <laughs> uh, on this trip over, he's, um, his first race was the Cardiff 10k, um, which is where this picture was taken. Um, he ran 29.05. Um, and won by 30 seconds, so uh, a good performance. And he had a very close race in the Bristol Half Marathon, uh, where one second separated the top three all Kenyan athletes. Um, Matthew got the second place, just missed out on the win. Um, again, another sub-64 can't win. Um, but we're really hoping on Sunday he can set um, a very good course record. If he wins, you know, it's not, you know, not guaranteed. But um, hopefully you can run a very good time as well. Um, next we have Gladys Jubet. I met um, Gladys out in Kenya uh, um, a few months ago uh, when I was there training. And um, I met her at the end of the ITEM 10K run. Now, I'll go into a bit more about ITEM later, but I'm sure some of you may have heard of it. It's, it's the mecca of distance running in Kenya. It's, where, it's a town of maybe three, 4,000 people, of which one or 2,000 of those are, are runners. It's based at 2,400 meters altitude, and it's, um, it's a good place to train. Um, so there was this 10k run, started down, down the hill, you ran up for about 6k, um, slight downhill and up again. I competed, I didn't take it for it, that's, that's my excuse, <laughs> but I came, I can't even remember, 260 something out of about um, 350, so I did beat quite a few Kenyans, and I think I was the first um, European finisher, but it just goes to show the sort of the quality of athletes out there. And Gladys um, finished a, a very competitive fifth position, um, which was brilliant. So this is her first trip to the UK. Um, she's done a few races already. She's training for a marathon, so she's, she did the Cardiff 10K um, position, sorry, position two. She was position two. Um, she did Bristol half marathon. Um, Swansea Bay 10k where she came third um, and again she'll be doing Ealing so hopefully she can as, as well as Matthew run a good good time on the course so there are our, um, our elite athletes and they'll be keep competing Sunday so now about me that's what I've come here to talk to you about tonight um, two aspects to me, there's me as the manager and me as the athlete, so I'll start them to tell you about me as the manager and what a sports manager or an, an age sports agent does. Um, maybe you, you think of, of an athlete's agent as you know, a really sort of swanky job, you know, travelling around the world, just picking up the prize money, it's, it's, it's not quite as glamorous as that, I'm afraid. do get to travel quite a lot, but I do seem to spend most of my time just sitting in airports, which is, is not much fun, as I'm sure, sure you all know. Um, 
What we do um, as an athlete manager, first, the first thing you have to do is find the athletes. You know, without athletes, you know, you're nothing, nothing. So we travel to, to Kenya, to Ethiopia, to Uganda. In fact, Peter, Peter does a lot of this. He's, um, he's very ready in this country. Um, so we go to Kenya, we, we go to the local races there, we try and pick up new talent, um, like Matthew and, and, and Gladys. You know, doing wedding races out there. We also try and find established athletes. Maybe not as easy because they would already have a manager. Um, they're looking for sort of contracts with uh, manufacturers. They're looking for signing on fees. Um, but we try and persuade them to come and join Run Fast. We'll do a good job for them, find them good races, um, and help them earn a good living. Once we have the athletes, then it's um, finding them the races. Um, it's not as simple as just putting an athlete in any race. If you have a young athlete that is first time out of Kenya, um, or Ethiopia, or Uganda, uh, maybe they haven't got a, a super quick time because it's at altitude, it's very tough to run up there. So, so we bring our development athletes to the UK, like these guys. Uh, we sponsor their flights, and um, hopefully they come here, <coughs> excuse me, um, run some fast times and make some money. You know, once they have quicker times, then we can we can put them forward for higher quality races that maybe the organisers will help pay travel. Um, then they run quicker times again, uh, and then they're getting in the sort of you know, top 30 in the world rankings, and then they're invited to the bigger races where they'll get all their expenses paid, hopefully an appearance fee. Um, so we, we, we take it in stages, and um, we like to really develop the athletes from, from the start up to this, this top level. And uh, you know, if we can do that, we think we're doing our job quite well. Um, so that's a series of races would be for the development athletes, like the ones in the UK. Um, One-off races are for the more developed athletes, which can be quite tricky. Um, most East African athletes would need a visa for pretty much every country they travel to. Um, we have to put together all the documentation, send it off to our um, contact in Kenya who will take it to the embassies. More often than not we get the visas but sometimes at the last minute they don't come through. It's disappointing for everyone. We arrange the travel, and accommodation and then a big part of our job is to is the race day management. So whenever our athletes are racing, we like to accompany them at races, make sure they have everything they need, you know, that they're comfortable, they're not worrying about where's their number, have I got any pins, <laughs> shoelaces, you know, I'm done, and all this. Um, and once we get them to the start line, that's our job done, and it's down, down to the athletes to do their job. So that's sort of what, what we do as a manager. So, about me, the athlete. So, I'm Tom Payne, as you know, but also known as Kip Rock. Um, this is a name given to me uh, when I first went to Kenya. Um, most of the Kenyan athletes come from a tribe called the Kalenjin tribe. Not all of them, but uh, a good majority. Uh, the Kalenjin names all mean when they were born. Um, so, some names could mean they were born when the cattle were grazing, or they were born... One name, Kimayo, means they, they were born when there was a lot of beer or a party. So that's quite a good name. And, and Kiprop means um, born when the rains were there, born in heavy rains. So when I first arrived to Kenya, there was a lot of rain. So I was given the name Kiprop, and it's, it's stuck. So um, at work, I'm called Kiprop. The only person that doesn't call me Kid Prop is my mum. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Um, I, I started running at an early age, um, joined my local club when I was 10, back in Colchester. Um, so, simple maths there, I've been running for 23 years. Um, I've actually been keeping a training diary for the last 10 years, this is a bit sad. Um, and it's on an Excel spreadsheet. And um, I think in the next few weeks, it adds up my total mileage. Um, in the next few weeks, I just break 40,000 miles. So I've done a fair bit of running. 
Um, I've competed in every discipline on track and field, including hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I won't mention my PV for hammer. Um, I've represented uh, my club, county and country, um, representing England from distances from 10k to 100k. Um, competed in 19 different countries, uh, lived in Iten, the home of champions, and I'm currently training for Frankfurt Marathon. So, a few pictures, <laughs> just to prove that I was a runner when I was a <laughs> um, So, some younger ones and some more recent ones. I'd just like to point this picture. If you can just see, just behind me on the right hand side, a small little figure. That was one of my Kenyan athletes that I beat in that race. <laughs> <laughs> Not one of uh, these ones. <laughs> so, um, so as I said, I've been running for a long time. I, I had some decent success um, at um, Steeplechase 800 as a younger, younger athlete. Um, when I, I left university, I was still competing in the Steeplechase. Um, I think I was ranked in the top 10 in the country for about three or four years. But one year I went on a holiday, um, it was a, an orangutan conservation project in Sumatra, and to cut a long story short, I contracted leptospirosis, also known as Biles disease, which you get from drinking rat's meat. I didn't do that now for companies. <laughs> but this um, put me in intensive care for, for one week, and at the end of that week, because I haven't got much fat on me, um, it just attacked my muscles. At the end of that week, I couldn't even stand up for, for one second. I, I, and it really made me reassess my running, but what did I want from my running? Um, people had always told me endurance was my sort of strong point, and I decided to strip step straight from the steeplechase up to the marathon and six months to the day that first day that I couldn't even stand up I did my first marathon and uh, although I was disappointed at the time I did 224 <laughs> that was that was okay but so I improved on that and improved on that over a few years after that to get to 217 in the Fukuoka marathon in Japan in 2009 um, and then towards the end of 2010, I was getting a bit stale with my running. I, I, I thought, what can I do to get the most out of myself, especially with the Olympics coming up every... I wasn't too far from the qualifying time. It wasn't an unreal dream. So I said to my coach at the time, what, I'll do anything, I'll do anything. I actually, I already quit my job at this point. I had a full-time job. I thought I needed some motivation to do something. So I just quit my job, no plans, said to my coach, I'll do anything, I'll go anywhere in the world, Kenya, America, Australia. And just, it just so happened, the week before, um, my coach at the time had bumped into Peter, who had just opened the Run Fast camp in Kenya and was looking for a British athlete to go out and train with the Kenyans and really live the, you know, the Kenyan way of life. And so, you know, I jumped at this opportunity um, and December that year, I moved to, to Ite, got the name Kiprop, as I've already told you, and uh, spent the next six months living on the Run Fast training camp in Ite, just me and 10 Kenyan athletes. So every day it was just living their life as one of them, and, and like I say, doing it the Kenyan way. I was, Mzungu means um, white man in Swahili, so. If you ever go to Kenya, they, they will say Mzungu, Mzungu, and that's what it means, white man. This is uh, just a, a sample of, of my training um, that I'm doing at the moment. It's very hard because you, you plan over a time, but just to give you an idea of, of what I'm doing whilst we're at work in a full-time job, um, I put the key sessions in red. Um, it, it changes week to week. Um, averaging, a, I don't really count miles, my spreadsheet does that for me, um, but about 100 to 120 miles a week. Um, these are my personal bests. 
um, just to give you an idea of my running. This one's very disappointing, but I've only done one. I won't go <laughs> <laughs> but quite a range there. Um, some of my career highlights here. There was one thing I'm not sure. Yes, I heard a lot of you have the um, the gospel half marathon as your um, club championships. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I won that three years in a row and the, and the course record holder. <laughs> <laughs> so if you need any advice on the course, then, then you come to me afterwards. I'm happy to to um, let you know. But it's a really quick course. Very nice. If there's no wind, really good course. Um, yeah, so just a few of the things I've, I've done. <laughs> so I thought one of the, the, the key things I'd like to sort of talk to you about was, was what I've learned from the Kenyans and, and how we can re relate that to, to anybody's running. Um, because often people see these Kenyans at the front of a race and they, and they sort of see them as this you know, magical runner that you, know, that you could never be like. But, you know, they're humans at the end of the day. They may be fast humans, but they are humans. Um, the first thing to mention is that they train very hard. Um, they train twice a day, six days a week, and then they pretty much always have a rest day on Sunday. Some don't, um, but a lot um, go to church on the Sundays, use it as a rest day but they do a lot of hard running. Their running is done at altitude in Iten, it's um, 2,400 metres altitude, so a mile and a half up in, the, up in the sky, which makes it very tough to run, and it's, and it's all like this. It's all hills, just nice rolling hills on beautiful dirt tracks. Um, and if anyone's run at altitude before, any hill is just kills you, no matter what speed you do. But these guys just make it look effortless. <clears throat> Their re the recovery to the Kenyans is as, as important as, as the training. If you ask any Kenyans, they will tell you the recovery is the most important part of the training. Um, they also, as well as doing the very, very hard running, they do very, very easy running. You, I, I remember one run I was doing out in Kenya. It was so slow, I thought I can walk at this pace, so I started walking and I could walk at that pace. That's how easy they run, not normally that easy, um, but they do run easy to get that recovery. They, uh, a coach out there once told me that they use the recovery running as a massage for the legs. It just, running that easy just sort of gets the blood flowing, it just helps with the recovery process. They keep it simple as well, they don't overanalyze anything, it's just training, Resting, eating, just simple. Um, they don't overanalyze things. If they have a bad race, they just move on to the next one. Sometimes they don't even think about it. We were sitting down with a guy today, and I, I think he'd even forgotten he'd raced. He didn't have the best race, but he'd forgotten about it. He was looking to the next one. And I think that, I know that's something that I always used to do if I had a bad run for the next week or two weeks, I'd be like, oh, what went wrong? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Well, it's good to learn from your mistakes, but don't dwell on them. You know. um, belief. They have this ultimate belief as well that they, they can win. You know. And I think we can all have a bit more confidence in ourselves. Um, and consistency in training there. It's no good just doing a week's hard training. It's, it's hard training consistently. You know, these guys have been running for, for a long, long time, consistently training well. Well, some, some of the secrets. Um, you may or may not have heard of the magical Ugali. Um, this is made from maize flour, um, poured into boiling water and stirred until it ends up looking like this. <coughs> the Kenyans will tell you that this is their seat, one of their secrets. Um, when in reality it's just a, it's, it's carbohydrates, it's like pasta. Um, but it seems to work for them, so. You can, you can get some maize flour here, so I would, um, would get you to try it if you can. It's, a, it's an interesting flavour. <laughs> <laughs> now the second one, this is a new one. But I only wonder why it says grazing bovine up there. But um, I read an article the other day by um, Wilson Kitsang, who, who said that 
one of the most important things for, for an athlete is to have some grazing bovine. And this is because they drink, a, as an elite athlete, you need to drink a lot of milk. So there you go, go out and buy a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Barefoot running, um, a lot of the, the Kenyans, when they're younger, they, don't, they can't afford shoes, so they, they'll, they'll be running barefoot. If you ask a Kenyan, they, they will laugh at this. But as we know, over the last few years in, in the Western world, barefoot running is, is, a, is, is a big thing at the moment. Um, and a lot of people put this down to why the Kenyans are good. It does strengthen up your feet. I'm not sure if it's the secret. Um, running to and from school, as we, you may or may not have heard, it's one thing that has been written about a lot is uh, people like Paul Turgat running 10 kilometers to school, 10 kilometers back from, from when they were knee high. Um, highly, Debris Lassie is another, another one, and I know a few of our guys used to do that. It builds an endurance from a young age, so it does give them an advantage. They live at this altitude, 2,400 meters. They're born and bred there. For them, that's their sea level. You know, when someone like myself or any of us go to altitude, it's very tough because we're not used to it. When they come down here, it's like running on clouds. <laughs> it, that's why people go altitude training. I'm, I'm not a coach, I'm not a physiologist, so I, I won't go into the, the sign, science of it, but it helps. <coughs> Genetics, that's something, unfortunately, we can't do. Um, if um, these guys were here in their, in their vest and shorts, you would see their, their, their stickling legs, they're carrying no extra body fat. They were built to run. It helps, you know, and unfortunately we can't do anything about our genetics. Um, they have this desire to, to run, to win. It's, um, as a Kenyan, and this next point as well, um, if you're an athlete in Kenya, you're really looked highly upon. You know, some of their greatest um, people from these countries were athletes, people like Paul Turgat. They're really ambassadors for their country. So if in Kenya you're an athlete, people will look up to you, even if you haven't competed outside the country. So it's, you know, it's an honor to be an athlete in, in those countries. Um, and they have this desire to go and race because they're going to, it can bring some income to them, which, you know, coming from a country um, that doesn't have too, too much, you know, they can earn some really nice money and, and really change the lives of themselves and their families, and bring, bring good education into their families by paying school fees, buy some land, build a house. It can really change their lives. And us as a sports management company, if we can help athletes to do this, it does give us a good feeling and we're doing a good job. But above all, it's, it's all of the above and more. There is no secrets, unfortunately. <laughs> so I just thought I'd talk a bit more about their training um, and how we can use that. Um, like I said before, keep it simple. You know, don't, it is a simple sport. Running is running. So um, I'll, I'll talk about the, the three main elements of training. If you can get these three things right, then you're pretty much there. So the first thing is training, running. The second thing is eating. And the third thing is recovery, sleeping. So keep it simple. You run, you eat, you sleep. If you get those three right, you're not doing bad. <clears throat> so training, as I mentioned before, Kenyans, it's one of the sayings that they're always telling me, train hard, win easy. Unfortunately, there's no shortcuts to, to running, to success in running. Um, it's one of those sports that you, you get out what you put in. You know, the harder you train, um, the better your results will be. Um, a lot of people are looking for these secrets, you know, if I do this, will it help? But I think probably nearly everyone if they just ran more, they would improve. Um, there's the sessions, you know. If you just do steady running all the time, then you, you're, you're going to plateau. You need to mix things up a bit and you can fit in different sessions, which I'll mention in, in a moment. One thing I, I will mention is that I am not a coach, although I've, I've been running for a long time, so I've picked up lots of experiences. I'm not a coach, so I'm not going to 
or give you too much coaching advice. Um, train smart as well. So if you don't plan, um, then you're more than likely won't hit your goals. Um, make targets and plan for those targets. Um, <clears throat> use progression in your training and uh, be consistent. I'll talk about that. So some different types of sessions that you've probably all heard about, but you know it's, it's always good to mention them again. Um, track workouts, intervals, um, hills. There's many different types of hill sessions you can use. Don't just do the same old hill session again and again. You know, mix it up um, because they all work different energy systems. They're working on your different you know, your strength, your power, your speed, your endurance. <coughs> One of the, the toughest hill sessions I've done is, is the, the Kenyan hills. Um, I'm not sure if you, you know how this works, but in, in Kenya often with their, they have so many beautiful hills there that you can choose any length of hill, um, whether it's 30 seconds up, up to the last one of the last runs I did in Kenya, which was 20 miles, constant hill. Um, that was tough. Um, but a Kenyan hill session, generally, they'll have a time, whether it's 45 minutes or an hour, and they just run at a constant pace, up and down, up and down, no recovery, up and down, for an hour. It's, it's very tough. Um, the long run, very important, building the endurance. Tempo runs, already mentioned, recovery runs, steady runs and fast. <coughs> All different types of se sessions that you should be putting into your training. Training smart. So planning is very important. But the way I like to do it, um, and, and we try and give our athletes as much time in advance to know their races, is so that you can have a target race, and this is what you're, uh, you're working towards. Um, work, you can build your training working backwards from this race. A lot of, I've, I've found quite a few people, they'll, they'll, just, they'll be racing a lot, but with no real target. And they ask, they say, Tom, why, why am I not improving? It's because you know, there's, no, there's no target there. They're just using every race, they're not tapering for it, and, and they're just getting the same results over and over again, and, and they wonder why. It's because there's no target there, there's no progression. So choose your target race, whether it's, you know, it probably isn't best to plan for the Ealing half now, because a few days. So, but um, maybe if you're doing London Marathon uh, next year, you know, now's the time to set your plans for that. You, you, you have London Marathon as your target, you can pick a few races along the way to target, but work your training around that. Another thing is that with, with athletics, with running, we're all individuals. What works for one won't work for someone else. So although you can get some really good ideas from magazines and and other and the internet, you know, this is it doesn't mean it's going to work for you just because it's working. Other people it could be the other way around. <clears throat> Progression, like I, I mentioned, some people just keep doing the same thing over and over again. If you do what you've always done, you get what you always get. Got. Um, so, in every training cycle, progress from what you did before, because that's the way we improve. So if, if very simple um, example, if before you did 10 by a K on the track in 3.30, um, you can either reduce the recovery, you could increase the number of reps, or you can make the, rep, the reps quicker. So just you have to get progression. If you don't do that, you, you're not going to improve. <clears throat> Nutrition. One of the great things about the Kenyans is that this simplicity of life, like I've mentioned before, and that goes with their diet. They have a very, very simple diet, but it's, it's very nutritious. They have their, their ugali, like we've mentioned. They eat lots of, of fresh fruit and vegetables, like direct from the farm, really, really nutritious. They'll have um, beef or chicken or milk, but you, know, you don't get McDonald's out there, you don't get chocolate bars. You know, they're just having a simple, healthy, balanced diet. And I think that's something that we can all improve on our diet. You know. 
Um, so when to eat, I'm not going to go into this too much, but you know, after you train, it's, it's, you want to get some carbohydrates and proteins into you as quickly as you can. It just helps with recovery. Um, training and racing, I put these together. You, want, you don't want to go onto a race day and, and try something brand new. You want to, with training, you want to practice what you do in the races. That's what's training for. You're training for a race. So with nutrition and, and your race, you want to have done that in training. So whether it's your race breakfast, you want to have practiced that a good few times before a training. So it's not a shock to the system when you, when you go out and race. Nothing worse than, than coming to your big target race. You have a different breakfast and you get a stitch and it's ruined. <clears throat> Hydration is important. You know, there's lots of sort of information out there from the different um, sports um, drink manufacturers about how much you should drink. I think in the goodie bags that we, we're giving out tonight, we have some high five samples in there for you to, you to try. Um, supplements, this one thing the Kenyans are always asking me about, but I always think, well, they've done so well all these years without supplements, well, you know, why do you, do you need to take them? Maybe if you've got a very hectic lifestyle, which many of us working full time have, you know, a multivitamin is a good thing if you can't get that healthy, balanced diet. That, you, that we'd all like to have. But, you know, if you are getting that diet, you shouldn't need to take too much more. If you're training hard uh, for a marathon, lots of mileage, then maybe an iron supplement might, might be beneficial, especially for, for ladies. <coughs> and the third most important thing is the recovery, um, sleeping. Um, so this is when the body recovers. Again, this is, this is a tough one for everyone working a full-time job because you know, you're at work all day, you're training as well, you get home and maybe you just want to chill out in front of the TV for a bit, but it's probably better to get an extra hour of sleep. You know, we could all probably do with one, two extra hours of sleep a day. Easier said than done, I know, but really try and, and get some more sleep. <coughs> now, you see Mo Farah here, which I'm sure you'll recognise. This is um, one of our athletes, Edwin Kipiego, who's won many races around uh, the UK. He was pacing London Marathon this year. I've never met anyone that can sleep as much as Edwin <laughs> Kipiego. He's incredible, but he is an amazing athlete, and he puts as much of it down to the sleeping as his running. You know, he says it's so important. He probably sleeps 13, 14 hours a day. <laughs> but he'll sleep 10 hours at night, um, and then have maybe one or two naps in the day for two, three, four hours. It's true, isn't it? It's true. And you, you guys, you're, you're agreed with this. You need to sleep, don't you? <laughs> so, I, I think it's impossible for any of us to get that much sleep. But there you go. So, one of the, um, the new things that RunFast are, um, are doing is and today is the launch day of this. We're putting on a, a training weekend, um, the first weekend of November. Um, it's down on the North Downs. Um, it's for any levels of, of, of runs. Um, just to, I think it's a good time of year because it's before the cross country season. Um, prepare you for the winter races. I'm sure most of you that the club runners are going to be competing over the winter. Um, just to for run fast to sort of maybe give us a give you some of our knowledge of running and, and on more of a practical sense, you know, we'll take you out for guided runs, do some of these hill sessions that the Kenyans do and uh, put into practice. And one thing that we're definitely going to do on there for one of the nights is do the Kenyan food. So we're going to do a, an ugali night, uh, ugali chapatis. Yeah, be interesting. <laughs> um, so the price is £99 plus VAT, it includes accommodation, food, everything it says there. And we, there's a flyer in the goodie bags for these.